time for this week's Outside. And today I'm joined by a very talented musician. Now, she's most renowned for being a member of the British pop culture band Bucks Fizz. They won Eurovision in 1981. I remember watching it. I was not there, but uh, I watched it and I loved it. I thought it was great when they took the skirts off and did the thing. She was named Miss Pearlie when she was 17 and subsequently competed in Miss England. Away from her music career, she stood as a candidate in local elections for the Brexit Party in 2019. And she's also taken to the stage as the evil queen in Snow White, which must have been fun to play. I think I could play that role quite well. She shares her talent teaching dance and performance at a performing arts school in Kent. It's safe to say she is a pop icon. I can't believe she's here. Please welcome musician Jay Ashton. Jay, welcome. Hello. It's so good to see you. And you. You know Cameron never lies. Of course I do. I watched, I watched you win Eurovision. I watched the thing. I used to watch wow. it all the time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and for you to actually be here. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about you then. I mean, OK, so you, you've always been quite a theatrical person, really. Yeah. So talk to me about how you sort of, what your life was like as you, as you were growing up and how eventually you became to be part of Bucks Fizz. Well, my parents were in showbiz. My dad was a comic. Mm. And he had a show called Comedy Bambox. So he introduced Talent of the Day. The uh, first person he introduced was Jimmy Tarbuck. Oh, Jimmy Tarbuck, gosh. And uh, my mum was sort of a singer-dancer and they do summer seasons and bit parts in movies and stuff. So my whole childhood was really showbiz. And my brother was in the original Oliver, so I used to oh, really? watch him. He did a lot of TV sort of commercials and a couple of movies. So, yeah, my whole childhood was just... Showbiz, showbiz family. You were showbiz. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother then went into, um, he represented the UK in Eurovision the year before with mm. a band called Prima Donna. I think they came second or third. And so, um, you know, I, I was a singer and dancer and did a bit of acting. And, and I was actually going to move to Jersey and run a theatre school. And I got this call from our, my agent. She said, I'd like you to come and uh, audition for this, this band. And mm. I went, I'll do one last audition. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and you got the gig. <laughs> we got the gig. And, you know, you never think you're going to win Song for Europe, let alone mm. Eurovision, or even have one or two hits after it. Mm. But, um, you know, last, last week we did our 42nd anniversary wow, at the O2 crikey. at the Indigo, which was a huge success. God, you don't think it was that long ago. All yeah. those years ago, I was just 10 and I was watching you guys. Yes, I was only 12. <laughs> no, there you go. We're so young, Holly. We're so young. I was a teenager, but yeah, no, it's been an incredible journey. Mm, mm. So. And of course, Cheryl Baker. Well, you, you, had you met before, or was it just the audition that you met and then eventually? We met, but we, our paths had crossed. I did Miss England, which was, it was just, you know, I went in my local beauty competition. I was 17. And bizarrely, she was performing with Coco, which was the other band she performed in the Eurovision mm. the previous year. So mm. we, we had sort of met before. And, uh, yeah, we, we all just auditioned. There was about 300 people auditioned, and we were just picked out. We all met in this lady, Nicola Martin's front room, and they, she said, you know, you are Bucks Fizz, mm. uh, and, um, and we're going to put you in primary colours. You know, and so it was, it was just a, literally a manufactured thing, which in those days was quite unusual. Mm. Normally, a band was, you know, all mates together from school. Mm. So. And the, the guys in the band as well, because it reminded, I think people sort of felt it was like ABBA because there were yeah. two women and two guys and you were sort of similar sort of feel. Was ABBA a, a band that you sort of liked in your Oh, I, I remember watching them win, water, you know, with Waterloo. It was great. And, yeah, I, I mean, I, I had this sort of patch with my brother when I was about nine. We both wanted to win Eurovision. Wow. Because Eurovision was huge then. Mm. You know, I know it's had its... It's uh, dips ever since, and, and it's just great that it's coming back to the UK this year. But um, as kids, we, you know, that was a big thing. We wanted to, I wanted to have a number one record. I wanted to be in the Royal Command, and I, uh, I wanted to win Eurovision. And I was nine, you know. I was did, very did you do all of those? Did you do all those? All of those. All of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't done quite the other, the other list yet, but uh, there's always time. And what was it like uh, performing at Eurovision? I mean, I bet it must have been like, I can't believe that we've been chosen first of all by the British public, and then to actually go and perform. It was amazing. It was very nerve-wracking. We didn't realise, at the time, we'd actually had some threats because it was, the IRA actually was mm. kind of a different, different world then. And so we actually, we were very separate from the rest of the contestants. But um, it was all exciting and all we wanted to do was get on stage and, and, and sing our song, Three Minutes to Change Your Life. Of course, the skirt ripping thing did really sick in people's brains oh, and yeah, I'm sure it's great. added to a couple of votes. We only won by a few votes, but... Um, Thank goodness for the skirt rip. <laughs> and, and since that happened, it must have really 
catapulted you into a major celebrity. What was that like? Well, amazing, really. I mean, normally, you know, Eurovision is an enormous springboard, but we just, we got lucky here, particularly, mm. and sort of in Germany and Holland, so we travelled all over the world for the next two or three years. Mm. And it was just, you know, sold millions of records. Um, an incredible time, you know, just sort of a dream time. Um, and then we had this terrible coach crash. I remember. Which sort of I was going to everything. ask you about that, yeah. And the whole dynamic just changed. And the fractures that were already appearing in the band, sort of mm. more within the band, they really came to a head. And I left shortly after mm. that. Mike Nolan was very badly injured in that. Yeah. Um, what, what, and what, take me back to that. What, what was the sort of story behind how that happened? Well, we were on tour, and mm. it was the second night of about a 36-day tour. It was in Newcastle. And we'd done our gig, and we were going back to the hotel. Um, and I remember I'd just moved. I, I'd moved from the very front seat further back. Wow. And I saw my manager, and it, some, it was bizarre. I would say a tangerine saved my life. Uh, this fruit was rolling about, and I went to pick the fruit up and saw my manager, and I went, oh, can I have a word? And that's when I heard, we're going to hit that. And we hit this lorry, and there was, there was roadworks wow. that were very poorly marked. And so we hit this lorry, which had a load of steel on it. So it was oh, like God. hitting a brick wall. And, um, you know, it was terrible. It was, it was dreadful. And um, Mike went through the front window, said to Cheryl, Cheryl broke her back. Mike oh, had a God. huge blood clot develop on his brain. Um, and it was like something had said, no, you're going to stop. That's, that's the end. There's another road here to go down. You know, it's, it's, it's so very you dramatic. picked up, a, you went to find an orange. <laughs> and you... <laughs> I went up the back. Yeah. Of the, the va of, the, of the coach, and it was like its maiden voyage of this beautiful coach, and there was like a kitchen there, and the fruit was just rolling about. So if I hadn't sort of picked the fruit up, and then my manager was just here, and I went, oh, can I have a word? And that's sort of when it happened. But oh it took God. me to a different place in the coach. Otherwise, where, where the main girder of the coach, I would, have, I would have been, it would have gone straight mm. through me. So those split-second, you know, Decisions change your life sometimes. Wow, that's something, isn't it? You must have thought, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to do I, something. Yeah, something special. I was lucky, but it was very traumatic, and I couldn't really see it. I couldn't see how that we could go beyond that, mm. and so I left about six months after. And what about was it Mike that got Mike badly injured? very badly injured? Uh, how is he now? Is he's he? amazing now. I mean, it took him a very long time mm. to come back to. Uh, you know, he's, he still has sort of medication, and he has tunnel, has oh, uh, he's poor vision on one side. But, I mean, it's done incredible, incredibly well. And, and we work, we still work, we still gig. We just have to be aware that he can't always see us. OK. Um, and, um, it, we, you know, we're still more united today, I think, than we, we ever were. Yeah, so you said it changed direction. What, 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 what happened in that change of direction? Well, I, well um, I left the band, and then the band went through various different incarnations, mm, that's right. groups. Yeah, it was David people. Van Day at one point. We were like, well, what, he's in another band, you know, and then everybody goes, oh, David Van Day's in Bucks. No, they weren't. Well, he was for five minutes. But it's, it's just, it got a bit political. Mm. And so we as three original members have lost the right to use the words Bucks Fears. We oh, have really? to be called the Fears. Oh, God. Which, was, which, which isn't, doesn't sit very well with us, um, bearing in mind, with, you know, with trademarks, it's meant to be that you're passing off for something, and, mm. and we lost that case. So, so what so happens we were somebody else have it? Who's got it then? Um, Bobby G's wife, okay. who was six when we won Eurovision, she owns, she owns the, the trademark Bucksfears and we can't use it. She should give it back. <laughs> no, I don't think she's there's any intention. She's not going to give it back. She's not going to give it back. <laughs> so now what are you up to? Because I know you're, um, you're, you're into your fitness. Yeah, yeah I've, I've always, yeah. always enjoyed... I think it came from my dad, because my, my granddad was um, a weightlifter, a world champion mm. weightlifter, so my dad was always into all that fitness stuff, and I trained and used to teach. So I've always kept fairly, fairly healthy. What, what did you teach? Uh, well, fitness uh, or dance. Did you? Yeah. You and teach I Zumba. To... Did you? I teach Zumba, I teach Zumba. You look very fit. You think? Yes. <laughs> I said, you. Yeah. yeah, I used to love it. I used to teach lots of places all over um, where, I, where I live, but yeah. Great. No, it's it's important, I think, to keep yeah keep it all in the right place. Because as yeah. we get older, it sort of moves about. The skin gets <laughs> loose faster. I thought, I've got, I'm getting back fat. I thought, oh, no, not back fat. God, uh, what do you do with the back fat? How do you get rid of that? <laughs> so you've been touring now, sort of at the moment, because, of course, this year Eurovision is in this country. Yeah. Uh, where have you been and, and what, what songs are you performing? <laughs> well, the week around Eurovision mm. is crazy for us. We're doing mm. lots of 
gigs and personal appearances. I think we're on the actual show for a, a brief moment. Um, can't say too much about that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a crazy week and we're just really looking forward to it. We've also got gigs. All, you know, if people are interested in, in coming to see us, they can always go on our website. But we do a lot of 80s festivals or 80s events all through the year. Um, and we're very lucky that we are still recording and we've been doing yeah. albums with Mike Stock, with Stock Aitken and Walsh, really? now that we're on our fourth album. So uh, there might be another one in the pipeline. Is it? What's your favourite? <laughs> what is your favourite Bucksfist song? I know what mine is, but what's yours? Go on, what's yours? It's the one I sang. My camera went Oh, my camera went so I put you in the picture and cut it down. That's, um, I, I do love that. It's quite a it's clever song. More. Uh, probably the land of make believe. Oh, I love that as well. Because oh, yeah, actually, that is my favourite. Right for the sun. <laughs> you know it. One. Is it? Is it? You're, you're an outlaw, outlaw once, once again. again. <laughs> Time to change, Superman. You'll be with you what you can in the land of. Brilliant. I know. I know. That. <laughs> I, know <laughs> I was a cool. fan. I was a fan. Yeah, actually, that was my favourite, and the video was quite good as well. I remember you had a yes. video, didn't you? Yeah. So yeah. I liked the video. So th I think between those two. But yeah, I think Land of Make Believe. It's just amazing. We go yeah. out and uh, do our, you know, these gigs, and everybody knows that of course, song. Of course. And we just put the mic out. We don't have to sing, you know. And they just oh, know all the words. Do that. I love it. Like, I'm like we're paying you to do it. <laughs> no, it's it's brilliant. But it must be amazing. Who, who wrote those? Did you did you write some of the songs or? Uh, mostly it was Andy Hill who wrote and produced most of our albums. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, We've been so lucky. Yeah, it's such a at, great band. At our tender age, still gigging. Well, what's your <laughs> website? So you can't have Bucksfizz. It's not Bucksfizz anymore. What's We're the, the fizzofficial.com. Fizz yeah, so there's everything on there. Gigs to be, uh, to find us in Liverpool. And more albums. With, uh, everything Under the Sun is our most recent album. And we just did the Indigo last week at the O2, which oh, was wow. our big anniversary concert. I'm, I'm going to go, I have to come and see you. Thank you very much, Jay. It's really lovely to meet you. My pleasure. Fantastic. Thank you.